Internals Tools, if you haven't been to the site, website, uh, here's this Internals Tools website, where you can download the tools. I actually updated some of the tools that I'll show you today, Auto Runs and SigCheck, this week. And there's a tool that I'm going to be using called Zoomit here. And the reason that I was playing Daft Punk, how many people like Daft Punk, by the way? Yeah? The reason I was playing Daft Punk is if you listen to the beginning of the song, Buy it, use it, listen. make it, fix it, trash it, change it, melt, upgrade it, charge it, point it, zoom it, press it. Zoom it. There you go. Shout out from. You heard. I sent him an email thanking him uh, yeah, for that, but he hasn't responded. Uh, I think must be busy. Anyway, uh, so back to Process Explorer and the process view, which uh, looks a little bit different than uh, Task Manager's view. The first thing you can see is its uh, tree structure, which shows you the parent-child relationship of processes. And for example, you can see that down up, up here in this section, the child's of this service host process, this service host process is going to be the background tasks infrastructure service. This is where you're going to see in now Windows 8, when you launch modern apps, they're going to be a child of this thing. But for the most part, what you'll see is that the parent-child relationship can tell you something about a process because every child of services.exe, the service control manager, is going to be hosting a Windows service, which I'll talk more about later. So in the case of malware, it will show you, for example, if you see malware as a child of another process, that that parent process might be infected with malware itself. You also see these colors. Besides the, uh, the icon information that I mentioned, the description, the company name, all pulled from the version resource, you see colors. First colors you'll see are these blue rows. And the blue rows, those are special kinds of processes. Those are, anybody? Boy processes. No, those are not boy processes. Those are processes running in the same security context as Process Explorer. The pink processes are hosting Windows services. The white processes are anything that doesn't match any of the other filtering criteria. And the blue processes are ones that are called immersive or modern. They're able to operate both in the old world and the new world. We come down here and you'll see that there's a, another couple processes here in a dark purple co color. And I'll explain what that is shortly. One of the things you can do when you see a pop-up is use the window finder, which is up here, to identify the owning window. So if I see who's the taskbar owned by, it takes me and says, well, Explorer does. This is a way if you've got a pop-up, you don't know which process it's coming from, it, you don't see any that look like malware, you can figure out which it is. And there's also a right-click search online, which has been a, an, adopted by the Windows 8 task manager. And the search online will do a search with your favorite search engine. Oh, yeah. With your favorite <laughs> search engine. Uh, and show you information about those processes. Now, the thing is, a lot of times that doesn't work anymore because malware either picks random or pseudo-random kind of names, and so they won't, the searches won't come up with anything. That, in fact, almost all the malware we see these days does that. There's also refresh highlighting. So some other colors you might see are if I create a process like Notepad, you'll see Notepad. Well, no. I don't know where it came up there. Let's close that. Let's do Notepad. And down here, what showed up in green was Notepad. And when I terminate Notepad, it'll show up in red. There's a problem with that refresh, though, is that it's short, it's a uh, refresh based. It's every second. And so if you run a short lived process like ipconfig, there it caught it. Actually, ipconfig spews so much stuff now, it's almost inevitable that it'll catch it. Um, Okay, never mind. Oh, that, that, that time it didn't catch it. So you'll see that processes that live between the refresh rate won't get caught, and I'll show you how to, to catch those later. There's also tooltips. The tooltips can be useful for looking inside of processes to see what's hosted within them. So I mentioned that the Windows service, the service processes, the ones that are pink, are hosting things, and I already showed you the background process launcher, but you have tooltips here on, the, on these. If I had a, a DCOM launcher, you would see a child of that, which would be the DCOM server. If I had a run DLL 32, which I can create by running a, uh, launching a control panel applet, I do the window finder to see who this is, and then it's a run DLL 32, and you'll see that the process is 
this run DLL32 target time date dot CPL. So this is a way to look at inside of a process quite conveniently. A lot of malware hides itself in run DLL32. There's some think features that are new. One is a timeline view. The other one is an auto start location view. I'm not going to spend time on those here because I'm going to focus on a different way of looking at auto starts, but this is something to be aware of. Just really quickly, how does Explorer get launched? If I go look at its auto start, it's configured as win log on shell, and that's why it gets launched when you log in. And so you could go change that if you wanted to, which malware we've seen does occasionally. You want to look a little more detailed at the process, double click on it. And by the way, there's a process here that is a little fishy because it is sitting here and it's purple. Now, I talked about coming back to the purple color. I mentioned packed earlier. Purple is Process Explorer's highlight color for a process that looks packed or encrypted. And the reason that processes are packed or encrypted is typically, not always, that it's malware that is using obfuscation techniques where it will load into memory and unroll itself. The reason it remains compressed or encrypted on disk is that it makes it harder for antivirus engines to get reliable signatures for them because they'll use different encryption techniques or compression every time they get generated. And we've got a couple of those here, these wind host processes. And if we take a look at them, they're not matching any of the other criteria that we've mentioned. Well, actually, maybe a few. Let's see. The command line or in the path show that it's sitting in the Windows directory. But this has got a kind of a legitimate Windows sounding name, WinHost. It says it's from Microsoft. So the, really the tell kind of clues here, suspicious clues, are that it is purple. So we're going to dig into that a little bit more closely by taking a look at its signing status, which you can do here. Let's talk about signing. Almost all Microsoft code is digitally signed, and most third-party code these days is digitally signed. So when you see something that's from Microsoft, you can go to the Process Explorer and say verify. And this will update the signing status up here, which in this case says no signature was present in the subject, meaning there is no valid digital signature on this which is another big clue that this is probably malware that's masquerading as, as a Microsoft process. Like I mentioned, you can see the auto start location here. This is configured in the run key. So that's a convenience there uh, that will show you that this thing is configured to auto start. But there's other ways to look at the digital signatures too. And when I clean malware off the system, what I'll do is say ver select all verified signers here, add that as a column, and then go to Options, Verify Image Signatures, and what Process Explorer will do is check the digital signatures on all the processes. So this is, then I sort, and I see down here that I do have some processes, ZoomIt, for example, the test versions of Sys Internal Tools, as well as these wind hosts that are not digitally signed. So those are the ones that I would potentially go and take a closer look at. Note. Some people say, hey, when, when I'm running Process Explorer like this or auto runs, I see connections to the internet. What's going on? This is a checking for the revo revocation of digital signatures, which is done automatically by the signing engine. So you will see that reaching out to a CRIL or certificate revocation list servers to see if those have been revoked. And there have been examples, several over the last few years, of malware being signed with digital certificates, legitimate ones that had to be revoked, and that you wouldn't know that those signatures were revoked if you are disconnected from the network. So this is a downside of disconnecting from the network. What I also do when I'm scanning a system for malware is run a tool called SigCheck, another system internals tool. SigCheck is just a tool that will show you digital certificates. And the way that I run it on a system is to use the dash S, which is the recurse switch, the dash E, which says look at anything that is executable, no matter what the extension, because we've seen many examples of malware that will give itself a JPEG extension or a .txt extension to hide, but it's really an executable image inside, and this will ferret that out, and then oh, dash U to show only the unsigned executables. Now let me do this without the dash S. And the only one that I find in the Windows directory is WinHost. Now I found other things here unfortunately, in the GAC 
and the GAC 